In this video, we're going to take a look at the first JWT lab on Port Swigger's Web Security Academy. The lab is called JWT Authentication Bypass via Unverified Signature. In the last video, we went through an introduction into JWT attacks and covered the background information that's available on Port Swigger's Web Security Academy, as well as some of the tools that we can use to work with JWTs like JWT.io and CyberChef, Python libraries, Burp Suite extensions, and the JWT tool. So I'm not gonna go through any of that stuff again. I'll just assume that you've already seen that video or that you know the background information, but we will go through the background information that's specifically relevant to this lab. By design, servers don't usually store any information about the JWTs that they issue. Instead, each token is an entirely self-contained entity. This has several advantages, but also introduces a fundamental problem. The server doesn't actually know anything about the original contents of the token, or even what the original signature was. Therefore, if the server doesn't verify the signature properly, there's nothing to stop an attacker from making arbitrary changes to the rest of the token. And we have a token example here with a username Carlos and is admin is set to false. If the server identifies the session based on the username, modifying its value might enable an attacker to impersonate other logged in users. Similarly, if the is admin value is used for access control, this could provide a simple vector for privilege escalation. In the first couple of labs, you'll see some examples about how these vulnerabilities might look in real-world applications. JWT libraries typically provide one method for verifying tokens and another that just decodes them. For example, the Node.js library, JSON Web Token, has a verify and decode function. Occasionally, developers confuse these two methods and only pass the incoming tokens to decode. This effectively means that the application doesn't verify the signature at all. And that brings us on to the lab. So the lab uses a JWT-based mechanism for handling sessions, but due to implementation flaws, the server doesn't verify the signature of any JWTs it receives. To solve the lab, modify your session token to gain access to the admin panel at slash admin, and then delete the user Carlos. We're given some credentials to log in with to begin with, so let's go and do that first of all. So we'll go to my account. We'll log in with Wiener and Peter. And we've successfully logged in. Now, if we hit F12 and have a look at our cookies, we should see that we've got this JWT in here. We can tell from those beginning characters, E, Y, J. And we know then we can take this to a tool like JWT.io or to CyberChef, and we'll be able to decode the token and see what's actually inside it. And in doing that, we see that we've got our header, which is showing the key ID and the algorithm that's being used. And then we've got our payload data, which is the ISS is port swigger, sub is wiener, and then the expiration as well. So we know from our introductory video that we have our header here in red, which is mapped to the red here. And then we have our payload in purple, which is mapped to the payload here. And they're just base64 encoded data, URL safe, should I say. The blue is the signature. So that's based on the data that we have in the header and in the payload and then it's signed with a secret key using the algorithm which is defined in the header. So without us knowing what that secret key is, we're not able to modify this data. We can obviously modify it because it's just base64 encoded data. So we can decode it, we can modify it, then re-encode it. But whenever the server tries to verify this signature, it's gonna do that and realize that the data no longer matches what it should. Well, it should realize anyway, but as the lab background indicated, it's possible that developers might not know that they need to use the verify function and instead use decode, which isn't actually gonna verify the signature, it's just gonna decode the data. So let's go to our Python scripts. We had a demo script last time and I've just updated that slightly. So we can provide this with a token, which I'm gonna do as well. Let's go and grab the token that we got from the website. So there's our token, it's going to decode the token and it's not going to try to verify the signature. And then, now you could have this verify the signature, there's nothing wrong with the signature to begin with, but if we do that, we need to actually specify the algorithm, which we could also do just by decoding the header, but let's just assume that we didn't even do that, we don't know what the signature is. That's fine, we just want to decode it, and then we want to modify the data, and then re-encode it. And we're simply going to replace Wiener with Carlos, that's the username that we want. And then that's it, we'll re-encode it. So let's try and save that. And we'll do python demo.py. There you can see the original data and then the modified data. And then here's our token. So if we take a copy of this and let's close this one down, let's just go and replace our session token, refresh the page. And now our username is Carlos. 
So maybe now we try and go to this admin endpoint, but it still says we need to be logged in as the administrator. So maybe we need to do something else. Let's move away from our demo script and actually have a look with Burp Suite. We know that we've got some extensions in here like the JWT editor and JSON web tokens. So here's our admin page. Let's send that to the repeater. And then whenever we get to the repeater, we've actually got this JSON web tokens box and JSON web token, a little bit confusing. But we can use either of these to play around with this. So at the moment, we've got this set to Carlos and the expiry as well. Remember that we had in the example that we looked at before we opened the lab, there was this example here. So is it possible that we just need to change is admin to true? It's a little bit strange because there is no is admin at the moment. So we're actually adding that in, but let's give it a go. Obviously, we want it to be true, not false. There we go, true. Let's hit send. And actually says 401 unauthorized. Admin interface is only available if logged in as administrator. So maybe we don't want to change that to Carlos. We need to change that to admin. And then we can remove the Carlos user. Let's try that. Send. All right, maybe it needs to be administrator. We'll hit send. And there we go. You see it's popping up with the delete option for Carlos. So we could simply make a request now to this using this JWT, or we could open this up in the browser and then go and delete it from there. We've also got plenty of other options here that we're gonna look at in future. In this case, we didn't modify the signature because we're relying on the fact that this server isn't actually checking the signature, it's only decoding the token and then just trusting whatever the username is set to. It looks like we don't need this is admin. Let's just verify that as well. There we go, it's still showing up with delete. Okay, let's have a look at JSON web token. Very similar. We can put in a username. It's actually still got that already from our previous request. So again, we just hit send and we get the same results. Just pick your extension of choice. They'll both work fine for this. Okay, cool. Let's check out one final tool then, which is the JWT tool. I'm gonna to grab this token again and let's do JWT tool. We'll just pass that in. And that's simply gonna decode it and tell us what the values are. So this is set to our original token. And if we do the dash H option, we'll get our help menu up and we can see that we've got a tamper option and inject claims option. So we can actually use either of these. Let's try and do the tamper one first of all. We'll say that we don't want to modify the header. So I'm gonna do zero to next. And then it's saying, do you wanna modify any of these or do you wanna add a new one? And I'm gonna say, yes, I wanna modify number two. And I want to replace the value with administrator. There we go. That looks good. And let's continue to the next step. It pops up and says, you didn't actually specify sign in methods. So it's probably not going to work, but we know it will work because we have already tested it out on the extension. So I'll paste that new token in. There we go. We reload and we've got through to the admin panel, which is awesome. Another way we could have done it is with the dash I flag and here you can basically say dash hc is for a header claim so you could say you want to modify for example what were the headers again kid so you could say hc is the kid and i want to replace that with the header value is going to be and then you just put in whatever value you want similarly we can do a payload claim and say it is sub and then we can do the payload value and say administrator and that's basically just going to do the same thing so we've just got back the same token but it's just two different ways of doing it and again we can go and put this into our cookies we could also go and just change this as the header on burp and use that in the repeater we do that we reload the page and now we can delete carlos and there we go we have solved the lab so to summarize it's very important that you use the verify function when you're doing any kind of server-side implementation rather than decode. They've basically got something on the server side which is doing something like this. It's just decoding it and then it's checking the username. And if the username is admin, it's gonna give us admin access. So this needs to be set to verify. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, as ever, leave them down below. Thanks.